software system with software engineering <laughs> so that we will be discussing and gradually we will be moving towards some research aspect of the some mathematical or some algorithmic aspect of multi agent system and also today we will be discussing how multi agent system uh, we mimic the human society with multi agent system the way uh, the human society works like interaction coordination cooperation suppose two people staying in the same room of the hostel they need to cooperate with each other there are some common resource maybe you have a common uh, you have a tv in the common room of the hostel and people are some people wants to watch movie some people wants to watch cricket how they will negotiate with each other so that is a very common phenomenon in human society now the same thing how we can simulate in multi agent environment that will be the focus of today's discussion okay so just uh, this was the discussion of the last lecture so multi agent system is present everywhere so agents have been applied to various application areas it starts from transportation domain transportation logistic workflow business process management distributed system uh, sensing rather we should say uh, sensor network so when you you have a collection of sensor and how do you coordinate this sensor such that you will get the maximum output from it that means with the minimum number minimum uh, involvement of minimum number of sensor how can you cover the maximum number of areas or maximum target region so that is there is a very common areas of applications of a multi agent system in uh, distributed sensing then you have information retrieval and management you have electronic commerce probably many of you are familiar with the um, auction e auction ebay kind of thing so there you will find Uh, the applications of multi agent system then you have <coughs> human computer interface the example that i have given there somebody is requesting his agent to negotiate with the agent of another person to schedule a meeting so it's a kind of agent to agent communication agent to agent interaction as well as human computer interface some virtual environment uh so there are lot of scenarios in human societies that you can model in virtual environment for example you are uh, the civil people civil engineers uh, people they develop an architecture of a building now if you if you see the architecture of big big building there is a compulsory uh, scheme uh, scheme of putting the uh, fire exit emergency exit kind of thing now if there are some kind of disasters happen in the building how the evacuation will take place if the building is of thousands of people then how the evacuation will take place whether it is properly can be done so that type of phenomena can be modeled in virtual uh, this virtual environment can be modeled in multi agent system and you can simulate the whole scenario that if this is my building there are thousands of people this thousands of people will be treated as thousands of agent they may be in a different room different offices of that building now there if there are some kind of disasters maybe earthquake or uh, fire in some portion of the building then how this thousands of people will be evacuated from the building that type of simulation can also be done with multi agent system similarly we have social simulation so some 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 phenomena for example yeah, there is a recent paper Mm, published with the top researcher of multi agent system how <coughs> this covid 19 is evolving in different one one parts of the world to other parts of the world so so they have they have designed a multi agent based simulation for uh, the spreading of covid 19 so there are a lot of applications where multi agent system can be used now <coughs> you will also find those people who are familiar with the software engineering or uh, doing research or something like that with software engineering there is an applications of 
software engineering in uh, multi agent system just like you have object oriented design function oriented design in the same way you can design your software as agent based system or agent agent oriented software engineering where each component of the software will be treated as agent and these agents will interact with the other other agent on the system to for some kind of negotiation cooperation collaboration to achieve some common goal so interaction is the most important aspect of complex software system ideally for loosely coupled black box component agents as a tool for human understanding human understanding of human societies as i said that how the human uh, society is evolving in a particular scenario just like i given the example like covid 19 now what is agent technology and what is the difference between agent versus distributed system probably the computer science people are familiar with the term distributed system where a set of processes and set of resources they are distributed across a network and these processes are communicating with each other through that network so instead of centralized system in centralized system all the processes are running in the same system but in distributed system the set of processes are running in different system different computing system they have a different resource requirement which are also not available on the same machine so here you instead of processes you think of agents so when you when we talk about agents not a single agent rather agents or multi agent system the main backbone is distributed system unless you have distributed system unless you have the computer network you cannot work with multi agent system the multi agent system notions come from the idea of distributed system so you have a number of agents who are distributed across the network they can communicate with for here instead of saying communicate we should say better the term is interact one agent should interact with another agent through that distributed medium for some kind of negotiation for scheduling a meeting for example they have a some common task or common goal to achieve together so one agent is not capable for doing that so he that agent may need to cooperate with other agent i will be coming some more example some realistic example with mathematics now agent versus economy and game theory some people may be familiar with the term uh, game theory which is a very uh, in one side it is a term of economics there are a lot of applications of computer science in game theory so <clears throat> the game theory allow the agents or multi agent system to think rationally while the agents interact with each other for achieving some common goal some common objective then the game theory or game theory model allows this agents to think rationally so it allows the distributed agents to rational decision making the difference between agents and object Uh, yesterday i have already discussed little bit about objects when you define uh, object oriented programming or object oriented software engineering then you 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 define while while you define an object declare an objects you define some kind of method and if this object needs to invoke that method for example as i said yesterday you can say mouse is an object it has some kind of method the right click the left click the scroll if i want some works to be done by this object then that specific method need to be invoked by the mouse 
the right click left click or scroll so explicitly you have to invoke that method for that particular object but while we talk about agents the agents are goal oriented while agents works in an environment it it sends the environment by at its own based on the sensing it creates some goal in the in, in his mind and accordingly it works you don't need to tell repeatedly how to do so the goal agent is more like a goal oriented okay. agent is more like a goal oriented um, agent is more like a goal oriented agent is uh, when you say agent it has an autonomy it has an independence it is not dependent on the human person or human being to tell repeatedly what to do but while we say the object this term does not come in the picture like goal direction or mental state sensing actuation independent autonomy this type of terms does not appear for the case of object next then what, what about the difference between agents and expert system while we while we say expert system expert system are kind of knowledge base it has a huge knowledge it can solve some complex problem so you have a bunch of information kept in some structured format based on the existing knowledge if you ask some questions some information the expert system can infer from it but while we talk about expert system again the autonomy goal direction independence does not come into the picture but while talking about agents we are more uh, towards goal driven some mental attitude sensing the environment so this type of things appear when we talk about agents moreover when we say expert system expert system is a more like a centralized system we don't think about the concept of distributed system we think that all the resources are available within a single system but when we talk about agents or multi agent system we think that the underlying is a distributed environment where a collection of agents are distributed across the environment they can interact they can negotiate they can collaborate to achieve some common objective so they are goal driven where the expert system doesn't similarly agent versus intentional system again intentional stance is a mental attitude so uh, inside the agent you have the mental attitude like belief desire intention i will be coming to that so these are quite similar when you say intentional system it has belief intention and goal in the same way when we talk about agents that has belief desire and intention so these are quite the similar of thing next we have agent versus ai so traditional uh, when we talk about traditional ai traditional ai uh, we mean it is a kind of doing some kind of reasoning it can do some kind of problem solving planning learning perception and action it does it doesn't have any goal direction in the mind there is no con concept of interaction so this solving planning learning perception action this type of things are also in agent so you can see ai is inside an agent along with that when we talk about agents there are 
multiple such agents working together. So without AI, you cannot think of agents. So inside a single agent, you have AI, you have the capability of problem solving, you have the capability of learning, you have the capability of perception and action. But along with that, you can have multiple agents. They are situated in some environment. So these are add-on with AI. They are situated in some environment. Each agent may not have the global knowledge. Each agent can perceive its surroundings environment, not the whole world of the system. As I said the earlier case, inaccessible. The environment is accessible, but a part of the environment is accessible, not the full. These agents interact with each other. They can collaborate, they can compete. So when we talk about agents or multi-agent system, we are kind of doing some kind of mimicry of the human society. But AI is something kind of narrow domain of problem solving, planning and learning perception action. So inside the agent, you have AI. Now, the main research component or main research challenge is here. <coughs> the, uh, this is called as a micro, or macro, micro and macro problem. First one is agent design. How do we build agents that are capable of independent autonomous action in order to successfully carry out the task that we delegate to them? Somebody asked yesterday that how do you, uh, what language you are using for building an agent? You can use any language. You can use Java, you can use Python or any other language you can use. But the main, this component, main uh, challenge is to design your agent. What is, what is the purpose of designing your agent? The language is not the matter. The matter is what, what is the requirement for your agent? What job you want to delegate to your agent? what job you want to delegate to your agent. And based on that, you have to think of the design of your agent. So designing the agent is the more crucial thing. So this is for when, when we say agent design, we are focusing on a single agent design. But when we talk about the society design, along with this type of single, single agent, we need to think about the interaction, cooperation, coordination, negotiation. For example, as I said, in a hostel, there are 100 students. So each of these students may be treated as an agent. But as a whole, this 100 students form a society in the hostel. And these 100 students staying in the hostel, they are using the same mess. They are using the same common, uh, common room. They may have the same common TT board. Sometimes they are mm, playing football together. So they are forming teams. So all these things that will come when you talk about the society design. That's why there are two aspects. One is agent design, another is the society design. When you talk about the society design, it is not a single agent, rather a group of agent. So your objective is to do some kind of job with a group of agents. So main two aspects, one is a micro, a micro problem and the macro problem. The micro problem is the agent design and the macro problem is the society design. When you talk about the society design, you must have some kind of objective function. You must have some kind of objective function. You must have some kind of constraint. Constraint, the obligations, the bottleneck. Okay, so that thing will be coming to the picture while you design the society. So there is an uh, a diagram of society design. It is a 
is again, I told you that it is a mimicry of human society. The uppermost layer is the interaction. So interaction is something like, it is a formalization of communication. When you say communication, when you say communication, communication is something like a, uh, some kind of technological term. These two people are communicating through mobile phone. Interaction. Interaction is kind of something like society, uh, society design. These two agents are interacting with each other for some purpose. Now this interaction, under this interaction, you have coordination. coordination. When you talk about coordination, they may have some shared interest. They may have some shared interest. Two people are coordinating with each other through interaction. That means they have some kind of shared interest. Now, they can compete with each other they can cooperate with each other. Two team playing football, so they are competing with each other, but they have a coordination. Unless they have a coordination, they cannot play in the same ground, but they are competitive to each other. They are following some kind of norms Two football team playing in the same ground competing with each other so they have some kind of coordination otherwise they cannot play football what is the coordination the coordination is the game rule there are certain rule of the game that both the players both the players of the team are following so they have a they have interest, but they are competing with each other. Now, if they are not competing with each other, we can say cooperation. Each of the agent or each of the team member will have some kind of interest. If they cooperate, their interest will be increased. That means that their payoff or the objective will be increased. If they play alone, they will gain something. If they cooperate with each other, their gain will be increase a lot. Under cooperation, there can be collaboration. If they collaborate, their gain will be maximized. So under cooperation, <laughs> under cooperation, they are, they can collaborate. They cannot. They may not collaborate. Just they are cooperating with each other, but not not collaborating with each other. So, but for all this, all these cases. The layer is the communication. The backbone is the distributed system or the computer network. Unless you have the distributed system or computer network, you cannot achieve communication. And as a result, you cannot achieve all these things, interaction, coordination, competition, cooperation, collaboration among the agents. So to successfully interact, agents will require the ability to cooperate, coordinate, and negotiate with each other, much as people do in the society. So first is coordination. Under the coordination, you have cooperation. Under the cooperation, you can have collaboration. Then you have practical reasoning in the agent's mental state. The practical reasoning directed towards an action, deciding what to do. So uh, when, you, when you have the agents, as an user or the owner of the agent, you will be telling what to do.
but you won't say how to do. So that means inside the agent, the design will be such that agent can find out the lower level task, what it needs to do to achieve that particular goal. So the practical reasoning consists of two main activities. One is deliberation, another is means and reasoning. The deliberation is deciding what to do. The first example that I have given, the profiles agent knows that I, I need to reschedule the meeting because my, my owner cannot attend today's meeting as there is an accident happened with his family. Proful does not need to say each and every step to his agent how the agent will negotiate the agent of the boss to schedule the meeting next day. So this is the reasoning capability that is called means and reasoning that decides how to do it. So Proful is said, Proful said to its agent that you please reschedule the meeting. Now the agent knows how to reschedule it. Proful does not need to tell his agent that how to schedule it. Practical reasoning is a foundation for belief, desire, intention model. Okay. Belief, desire, intention model. So belief, desire, intention model is a very uh, popular model for designing any uh, multi-agent system. Okay. An agent intends to do action alpha if and if, if and only if it has a persistent goal to have brought about a state where it believed it was about to do alpha and then did alpha. I thought I will be taking on one example, but I forgot to write. The example is uh, this is rainy season. While I am I was leaving from home. It was cloudy. So as it was cloudy, there is a possibility of rain. So I took I took my umbrella with me. This is a statement given by me in the morning. This is rainy season in Durgapur. This is rainy season in Durgapur. The weather is cloudy. There is a possibility of rain. So I should take my umbrella with me. If this is the statement, then you think what is the belief? What is the desire? What is the intention? The belief is this is rainy season. This is rainy season in Durgapur. And the as the weather is cloudy, so there is a possibility of rain. If the weather is cloudy, there is a possibility of rain. That is the belief that I believe. I believe that this season is the season of rainy rain in my locality. And from the morning as it was cloudy, so there is a possibility of rain. This is my belief on the environment. What is my desire? Not to get wet. I don't want to get wet. That is my desire. What is the intention? To take some measurement. Maybe umbrella, maybe raincoat, maybe my four-wheeler. So I have a belief base. I have something to desire that I want to achieve, not to get wet. I have some intention. Maybe I can 
take my umbrella with me. I can take the raincoat with me. Today I can live by four wheeler. Out of this three, I choose one action. What is the action? I choose to take my umbrella. So this is called the belief base, the knowledge about the, the knowledge about the environment, desire, what I want to achieve, what I want to achieve, I don't want to get wet. Intention, what are the possible things that I can, I can do, and action, what actually I did. So desire describe the state of affairs that are considered to be achieved. Desire describe the state of affairs that are considered for achievement. Basic preferences of the agent. What is my basic preference? Not get wet. Belief. Belief represent the informational state of the agent. In other words, it's, it's beliefs about the world. What I think, what is my knowledge base about the society. Belief set, belief are stored in database, sometimes called as belief base or belief set, although that is an implementation decision. So how does it work? Sensor input. I see the, I wake up in the morning, I see outside, I found that the weather is cloudy. So this is my belief. Maybe belief by seeing the environment through eyes, I may revise the belief. So belief may be revised during the course of action of the agent. Maybe for last 20 days, though it is rainy, but there was no, uh, sorry, though it is rainy season, but there was no question of rain. So my belief may be changed. My belief may be revised. Then generate options and my desire. My desire is, oh, so generate options. So that means I found that it is a rainy day and there was a cloudy weather from the morning. So my intention not to get wet. Then I try, try to find out, try to find out what are the possible options that I can follow. I can take the umbrella with me. I can take four wheeler with me. I can take raincoat with me. So that is my intention. And based on the intention, I part from the action. I choose an action and ask the output. So here, belief, desire and intention all are dynamic in nature. During the course of action in the environment, the agents may revise its belief. As the belief changes, the desire may also change. As the desire changes, the intention may also change. As the intention changes, the action will also be changed. So this is a continuous process. So it's a formal model of BDI architecture, belief, desire, intention architecture. Let B be a subset. This belongs to DEL, D, <coughs> subset of D, uh, desire, DES, I, subset of intention. He has said, describing the belief, desire, intention of an agent. 
percepts perceiving the environment denoted as per action ac as before plan set of all plans for now sequence of action so belief division denoted as brf belief the earlier belief multiply all possible perception that will change the new belief base so existing belief base new perception that may change the belief so it's called belief revision after sensing the environment so that sensing the environment is the perception option generating of options belief what is my desire i mean what i want to achieve that is my desire and multiply the intention so out of the possible intention i will choose one intention so belief multiply desire multiply intention that means we are doing the cartesian product of all the possibilities my belief base all the desire options all the intentional options intention options that will give me a intention that i want to do the means in reasoning is a plan so plan may be may consist of number of such action when you so plan it consists of number of such action so belief intention and the action that will lead me to plan so this is the bdi architecture the formal model of the bdi architecture okay issues in multi agent system in multi agent system we address questions such as how can the cooperation emerge in societies of self interested agent here when we say multi agent system there are not only one agent rather there are multiple agents deployed in the society and they are self interested agent now how this self interested multiple agents will cooperate with each other how they will negotiate with each other so that is a big question this is one of the issues the second issue is what kind of language can agents used to communicate for example today i know english and sorry i know bengali bengali is my mother tongue i know hindi very well but today i am speaking english because there may be student from different domain different area of the country so i prefer to speak in english moreover english is the medium of language in a higher education in india so english is treated as the medium of language in higher education in india so you need some kind of language on which the agent will communicate with each other otherwise one agent will speak the other agent cannot understand so i may deploy one agent you may have another agent unless these two agents know each other's language they cannot communicate for example if if uh, suddenly if i start talking in malayalam probably none of you can understand because malayalam is not the language which is known for you so we need a common medium of language which all we agree that we understand so in the same way we need a language or agent communication language how can self interested agents recognize conflict while doing some negotiation <coughs> cooperation collaboration you may find lot of conflict and how can they reach to an agreement to resolve the conflict how can autonomous agents coordinate their activities so as to cooperatively achieve goal you have a number of agents how they will cooperate with each other to achieve the common goal so that we will be discussing one by one so these are the major major issues 
in multi-agent system. So in continuation with that, we have constrained constraint kind of obligation that I cannot do, the restriction that I cannot do, inabilities. From a computational point of view, they reduce the space of possible solution, encode knowledge about the problem at hand, are key components for efficiently solving hard problems. Hard problem means computational hard problems. So, in further, okay. Take an example of constraint processing in multi agent system. A set of agents must come to some agreement, typically via some form of negotiation, about which action each agent should take in order to jointly obtain the best solution for the whole system. Here, the objective is to schedule a meeting. Each agent may have multiple meetings in the office. Each agent may have different preferences of their meeting. Now, how can you schedule a meeting among this group of agents? So with this example, we will be going slowly further. And this is a computational hard problem or NP hard problem. So this is called distributed constraint optimization problem. Here, the, what is the constraint? The constraint is you cannot miss a single agent for the meeting. That means all agent should be in the meeting. As a result, you cannot start the meeting before the agents are available. There is a constraint. If somebody asks me that when is your preferable time for the meeting, I will say in the first half. But if my HOD says no, first half is not possible, you have to appear in the second half. I don't look okay, no problem. I will be available in the second half. My preference is in the morning, but I can be available in the second half also. So the optimization value may reduce to me because I was preferring in the morning, but I am also available in the second half. So that is constraint optimization. So there are two approaches. One is constraint optimization, another is constraint satisfaction. I will be coming. So each agent negotiate locally with just a subset of other agents, usually called neighbors, that are those that can be directly influenced his or behavior. So a constrained network N is formally defined as a tuple X, D, C. X is a collection of N number of variables. It is a set of discrete variables. D is the domain of the variable. It is a set of variable domain which enumerate all possible values corresponding to variables. So the idea is x1 can take any value from d1 to dn. x2 can take any value from d1 to dn. x3 can take any value from d1 to d3, dn. So this is the domain for the variable x. c is equal to c1, c2, dot dot cn. It is a set of constraint which a constraint c is defined as a subset of variable si subset of X, which comprise the scope of constraint. 
two meeting cannot be scheduled at the same time there is a constraint i may have multiple meetings i may have multiple meetings but the two meetings should not overlap that is a constraint so type of constraint it can be hard constraint it can be soft constraint hard constraint is two meeting cannot overlap the soft constraint is i am preferring to have the meeting in the second first half but still i am okay with the second half so that is a soft constraint soft con so you can violate the soft constraint but if you violate the soft constraint your objective functions value will be the pay off value will be minimizes but if you violate the hard constraint it is not acceptable hard constraint is not acceptable a violation of the hard constraint is not acceptable so a hard constraint c i h is a relation of r i that inverts all the valid joint assignment of the all variable in the scope of constraint like this so it is a cartesian product of all this domain values now if if i say it is a hard constraint so either it can be zero or one either you are violating the hard constraint zero or you are not violating the hard constraint one there is no middle values of that a soft constraint is a function fi that maps every possible joint assignment to all the variables in a scope of real values the value may be reduced i was preferring the meeting in the morning but still it is okay if it is in the evening so the my pay of value will be reduced this r but if it is a hard constraint either it will be done or not there is no in between values so that's why <laughs> either it can be constraint satisfaction problem if it is a hard constraint if it is a soft constraint then con constraint optimization problem now when you talk about multi agent system then instead of saying constraint satisfaction problem or constraint optimization problem we should say distributed constraint satisfaction problem and distributed constraint optimization problem let us define the distributed a distributed constraint optimization problem dcop a dcop consists of the same constraint network that is xdc and a set of agents a1 a2 a3 dot dot ak where each agent is responsible where each agent is responsible for picking the values of any variable for example a1 agent a1 is responsible for putting the values of x1 or uh, choosing the values of x1 a2 agent a2 is responsible for choosing the values of x2 a3 is responsible for choosing the values of variable x3 and as i said earlier x1 should be from any values of the domain d x2 from should be any values from the domain d now which value to be chosen that is to be decided by the agents and this agent can communicate with each other which value i am choosing here agents are assumed to be fully cooperative cooperative in the sense what value i am choosing i am ready to declare that to my neighbors i can i will cooperate with each other so the objective what is the objective find the find the assignment that optimizes the global function not their local entities local utilities so my objective is to choose the values of all x 
this all x are the variables controlled by the agents each agent so my objective is to choose the values of each x such that the global function global function value of the global function is maximized or minimized if it is an maximization problem the global function should be maximized if it is a minimization problem the global function should be minimized so solving this constant optimization problem or distributed constant optimization problem is an npr problem so there can be lot of application of dcop in computer science that classical problem is graph coloring problem i think many of you are familiar with the i mean all people i i should say the computer science people should be familiar with that graph coloring problem but traditionally the graph coloring problem that is in a vtx syllabus is centralized graph coloring problem that means every node i mean every node knows what the other node is taking the color what color the other node is taking so everyone has the global knowledge of it when we talk about the graph coloring problem typically traditional graph coloring problem but in real life we will be considering the graph coloring problem as a distributed graph coloring problem where an agent knows the color of its own node not and only its neighbor not the entire graph so in other way we can say an agent is responsible for choosing the color of its own node and it can communicate only with its neighbor node so that that is called distributed graph coloring problem apart from that there are lot of other applications for example meeting scheduling problem sensor network robotics etc so uh, do you have any questions though i am uh, i am continuously talking hello মাহাতো hello yes yes sir yes, somebody raise the hand so would you allow her to talk yes yes sir yeah please yes gitanjali you can ask the question hello yes gitanjali you can uh, raise your question Gitanjali you can ask the question I don't know anyways if someone else is interested to ask they can also ask the question okay yes, so let me continue yeah uh, so graph coloring problem <clears throat> so first we will be taking the example of graph coloring problem as constraint satisfaction problem then we will be going to constraint optimization problem 
we have taken a small graph with a four node and they are connected like this way node can take any of this k color here the k value is 3 any two adjacent nodes have should have different color that is the constraint so in any cost we cannot deviate this thing so this is called the constraint so this constraint cannot be deviated if i say constraint satisfaction problem then in any cost we have to maintain this constraint if it happens that means if we violate this constraint then we will say it is a conflict and we could not resolve the problem so if we choose this color then it is invalid so each node chooses a particular color and no two adjacent node have the same color but if you choose this orientation then this is violation so this is not a valid color this is a conflict now we are converting csp problem to a max, maximum max csp as a minimum minimum is the number of conflict we want to minimize the number of conflict so we are moving from constraint satisfaction to constraint optimization problem gradually if there is no conflict so in this orientation there is no conflict so that's why the value is zero here there is a conflict so minus one our objective is to minimize the number of conflict so no conflict conflict so here in this example the conflict is acceptable but we have to color the nodes with minimum number of conflict but earlier case it was a constraint any two adjacent nodes should have a different colors that was a constraint here it becomes max csp next We are modifying the problem. Different weights to violate the constraint. Preferences for different color. If there is a violation of this two node, then minus one will be there. If there is a violation of this two node, then minus two. If there is a violation of this two node, minus three. If there is a violation of this two node, then minus one. So one of the orientation is this, but there is no conflict, zero. This is another orientation where there is a conflict and the conflict is among this two node, whose the value is minus two. So its value is minus two. So we are moving from constraint satisfaction to constraint optimization problem. We, have, we are going to optimize So here, conflict, uh, we should not say conflict. We have to minimize the number of common color. I mean, minimize the number of conflict. So, so far we discussed the three example of graph coloring problem without the notion of agent. This is a traditional graph coloring problem. We are familiar with it. Every one of you familiar with it.
Now we will be moving to distributed graph coloring problem where each agent is responsible to choose a particular color. Somebody raise the hand. Hello, somebody raise the hand. Do you yes, want, yes. want to ask? Do you want to ask question? Yes, Ketan, you can uh, ask your question. Yes. The main concept of the learning problem is that undirected graphs. Hmm. Hello. Can you hear me, sir? No. Hello. Hello. Am I able to not audible? Can you write the Hello. Hi, hello. Yes, can I be to you, sir? Yeah. Tell me. Yes, sir. I want to know the main concept of graph pro in coloring problem that given an undirected graph, determine if the graph can be colored with at most color such that no two adjacent vertices of the graph are colored with the same color. So, so you want to find out the number of colors? No, actually it's the main concept of graph coloring problem, sir. I have to sent you already at home, sir. Can I determine if the graph can be colored with the most color such that not to adjust the graph from color to the same This is the answer. Huh. So what is your question? Yeah, I want to know this is the main concept, no, sir. That what yes. I have asked to. Yes, 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 yes. So, so this is this is the main concept of graph coloring problem, right? Node to adjacent nodes should be of the same color, right? So this is this can be called in a general sense as constraint satisfaction problem. What is the constraint? The constraint is node to adjacent node so would be have the same color. That is the constraint, right? Now the same problem can be treated as constraint optimization problem where two node, two adjacent node may have the same color, but when there is a two adjacent node have the same color, the value or the utility will be decreased. The utility will be decreased. That means we are moving from constant satisfaction to constant optimization problem. And our objective is to maximize the utility. Whenever there is an, whenever there is an conflict, that means two nodes having the same color, then there is a cost associated with it. Your utility will be decreased. Okay, so we are moving from constant satisfaction to constant optimization problem. Okay, so what is the concept of the weight assigned minus one minus two times? Okay. So we <clears> just <throat> Yeah. Yes. Sir. What? Yeah. What you told that is basically this problem. Okay, sir. Two node cannot have the same color. If if two node, two adjacent node have the same color, then we will say this is a conflict and that is not acceptable. You can put its value as infinite that means this is not acceptable the util utility is i mean largely degraded you cannot accept this thing now we change it 
from constant satisfaction to constant optimization, if there is a conflict, then it won't be infinite. Rather, it will be a valid value, a real number. Yes. But that should be a negative. That means your utility is degraded. That means in the semester exam, you have a pass, you have a fail, right? Yes, sir. Pass fail ka beach mein bhi kuch hai to. Pass fail ka beach mein bhi to kuch hai. Pass fail ka beach mein bhi kuch hai. And that is this. That means we are assigning some values that whenever there is a conflict, a cost will be associated with it. And our objective is to minimize that cost. Hmm. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. This, the same thing has been modified here. We already put some weight on the arc. If there is a conflict on that particular arc, then the associated cost will be this. So here, there is no conflict in this in this graph. There is no conflict in that color, so that there is associated cost is zero. But here, there is a conflict in this arc, so the associated is uh, cost is minus two. It's a minus two. Okay. So so far, whatever we discussed, we discussed the centralized graph coloring problem, which are very much familiar with us. We know that we know every node's color. Now we will be gradually moving to cons distributed constant optimization. What is the difference? Each node controlled by one agent. Each node is controlled by each agent. Each agent preference for different color communicates with its neighbor only. For example, agent one is responsible for choosing the color of this node. Agent two is responsible for choosing the color of this node. Agent three is responsible for choosing the color of this node. Agent four is responsible for choosing the color of this node. Each agent can communicate only with its neighbor. Agent one can communicate with A3, A2, and A4. But agent A3 can communicate with only A1, not A2 and A4, because the neighbor of A3 is only A1. So any agent can choose any color, and whatever color it chooses, he will notify to other agent that this color I have chosen. And accordingly, the other agent will modify their color. Okay, so the optimization concept is same. We have to assign or we have to find out the minimum number of conflict. We have to choose the color or the agent will choose the color in such a way that there will be minimum number of conflict. So there are a number of algorithms for solving this problem. I have those algorithms. Maybe in the next class, I will be discussing those algorithms. But what is my point of discussion is to, is to understand the notion of distributed color graph coloring problem how it is different from centralized graph coloring problem. Here, nobody is, uh, I mean, uh, we don't put any responsibility to any agent. We think that everyone knows everyone's color. But here, a agent knows only its neighbor color, not the all the colors.
Next, another problem is meeting scheduling problem. In a large organization, many people possibly working in different departments are involved in number of working meetings. The meeting such that no two meetings have the overlapping time. That means we want that every member of the meeting should be participant. So two meetings that share a participant cannot overlap. Two meetings that share a participant cannot overlap. Two meetings that share a participant cannot overlap. So we need to find out the window, the available window, time window. For example, 15 hours to 18 hours. This window is 15 hours to 17 hours. So you need to find out the common common timings when your meeting can take place. So DC of a formalization for the meeting scheduling problem, the objective function, find a valid schedule for the meeting while maximizing the sum of the individual preferences. I prefer to have meeting in the morning. So the objective is to some individual's preferences. A set of agents represent participants. A set of variables represent meeting starting time according to a participants. These are the variables values. Come time, me time free hai. There are two types of constant, as I said, hard constant, soft constant. Hard constant, starting meeting time across different agents are equal. Starting meeting, starting meeting times across different agents are equal. That means I want that every, every member of the meeting should be present. Meetings for the same agents are non-overlapping. I should not have two meetings in the same time. So these two constraints are treated as a hard constraint. What is the soft constraint? The soft constraint represents agent preferences on the meeting starting time. I, I don't prefer to have evening meeting. All the officials meetings should be in the morning. That is my preferences, but that is not a constraint. So that's why it's called soft constraint. Even if there is an urgency, I can have no problem in the meeting in the evening. That is a soft constraint. Okay, so this much for the today's discussion. And so whatever we discussed, these are the output of my PhDs who worked on this particular areas for the last five, six years. One is Polavi Dalapati, who completed his PhD, her PhD in 2018. Our work was on multi-agent based algorithmic approach for railway scheduling, collision handling and optimization. Another person worked on service oriented middleware in ad hoc network. That is also the concept of multi-agent based middleware. He completed his PhD with me in 2019. Another person, Nana that novel algorithm for multi-agent coalition structure generation. I will be discussing this problem very um, elaboratively. He completed this year. Another two persons already working um, ongoing. Multi-agent based job scheduling and on-demand rescheduling. Another somebody, coalition formation in multi-agent system. So these are the PhDs who worked and working on this domain with me. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can have discussion or otherwise we can at the next class in tomorrow. Does anyone have any question? Or the fact if the faculty members have any questions, I can have a discussion with them separately also. 
I think one question asked Kumari Gitanjali. If you have any question, yeah. please ask the question. Sir, no one has any question. Okay. If the faculty Thanks. members feels they can have, they can ask me. I don't have any issue. Otherwise, we can uh, go for tomorrow's class. You explained, okay. sir, very nicely. Thank you so much, sir. Oh, okay. thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Sir. Okay, then. Okay. Okay, now uh, today's session is end here, and now you can leave the meeting. Tomorrow we'll continue from ten thirty. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank you. Tomorrow. Thank you.